get started. Uh, firstly, Nick, welcome to the Australian University Games uh, as a patron for the event. Uh, we're, we're very pleased to have been able to, to bring you on board. Um, we hope you're looking forward to being involved. Absolutely, it's a, it's a privilege. Yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, sport in Australia and sport in Western Australia. So, uh, you know, to have it in my hometown is, is fantastic. Such a diverse range of sports. I think there's 31 sports in all, and uh, I'm looking forward to a fantastic games. So, um, you know a bit about the Australian University Games program mm -hmm. that we're offering in September. What attracted you to it as a as someone to come on board as a patron for us? Yeah, well, just you know, living in Perth here, it's uh, it's an outdoor lifestyle. I love my sport. Um, I love the diversity that we have here, and and with the games, I mean, with all the sports going on, it's just a great opportunity for the for the young people to to see Perth and to uh, to play to play a lot of different sports and a lot of great sports and uh, any time you get outdoors and you know have a bit of fun that's the one thing that I, I notice you know with the younger generation these days I feel like I'm old now saying that <laughs> is uh, you know you sit in front of the TV too much these days rather than just getting out and, and getting and playing and, and competing and that's that's the biggest thing whether you're good at it or not I think the competition is, is really the important thing and uh, I was always a, always a great believer and when I got brought up I was always taught it doesn't matter how you play the game Sorry, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, it's, yeah. it's how you play the game. And uh, just to compete against something, there's no other thrill. And even these days, even if I'm having a game of ping pong with my wife, I still want to beat her, you know. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it's just any, any tournaments, games, uh, involvement in this that I can ever get involved with, I, I just love being part of it. Um, now, your year's taken a slight detour, it's fair to say, <laughs> um, which has brought you back to Perth, um, which is why I've been able to, to bring you on board. But uh, can you share with us sort of how the knee surgery's gone and, and what's sort of left for you for the rest of this year? Yeah, the knee surgery went well. About four weeks ago I had um, arthroscope on my left knee and then a reconstruction on my right. So um, it came to the point where about six weeks ago I, I tore the meniscus in my left knee, um, bending down the rate of putt of all things. So it's a physical sport, this goal. Yeah. And, uh, I had some problems with that left knee and I've always had problems with my right and I knew I needed a reconstruction at the end of the year so to play golf on two bad knees is not a good idea so um, I thought it was time to come home, get them fixed and uh, and so far so so far, so far good. Now I mean the, the life of a pro golfer seems very glamorous <laughs> from the outside but uh, I'd imagine it's, it's a little bit different on the inside with the amount of travel and the time away from home and, and constantly moving. What's, it, what's the sort of the, the realistic uh, week for you guys? It's, you know, look, when you're playing golf uh, well, there's no better game. I mean, it, it is glamorous. It's, you, know, you, you can, you know, life is good, basically. But when you're playing golf poorly, it really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, the biggest downside to, to, to playing the game and, and having a family is, is you, you, you know, you're not home a lot. Um, I've got two young girls and my wife at home. If school holidays are on, well, sure, they can travel and, and, it's, and it's a lot of fun. But if not, you know, it's, uh, it's a fairly lonely lifestyle. But... Um, at the same time, it's something I love and enjoy, and I've I've done it most of my life, and uh, and I wouldn't give it up for anything. It's um, you know as long as I'm competitive, and if I can uh, keep doing well at the game, uh, I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, having said that, you know we've been on the road for probably coming up to 12, 13 years, maybe even longer actually. Um, you know, coming back to Perth with uh, with this trip and getting my knee sorted out, we've realised. You know, how good we've got it here in, in Australia. So I think we'll be coming home sooner rather than later. Yeah. And will you make Perth your, your, your base when you do come back to Australia? Or oh, yeah. will there be a bit of a lure for the East Coast with the East Coast tournament season? Just take a short stint over there and then come back? Or yeah, probably so? probably just a short stint. I mean, there's there's talk of this One Asia Tour getting up and running. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that gets going and I could base myself here in Perth and maybe pl play a few events there or maybe play a few on the European Tour again. and um, Or maybe, you know, get out of the tournament scene and do something else like a bit of teaching of golf and things like that, get back to my roots I guess. So, uh, but Perth's always home and, and, uh, and you know, I couldn't think of living anywhere else. Now obviously you've played a lot of courses in your time. Mm. Uh, we're, we're here actually at Mount Lawley, your, your <laughs> old haunting ground, or hunting ground uh, from, from your, your junior days and the like. If you could play one course, or could only play one course, what, which one would you, would you go after? I, I'd have to say St Andrews, um, side of this year's British Open. Every time I play it, the golf course shows something new. It's, a, it's an amazing design. Uh, hundreds of years ago it was created. I'm not sure how long ago, but the first time I played there, it was uh, I saw these bunkers off the tee 100 yards to the right or 150 yards to the right. Nowhere in the line of play, and I thought, what are they doing there? And then the second time I played there, I had to actually try and avoid those bunkers, <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, this place is amazing. You just 
with the weather conditions and the way the course sets up and the size of the greens and the, and the design, it's it's second to none in my mind. And it'd be it'd be a golf course every time you went out. You'd, you'd learn something new every time you played it. Yeah, so they change every time. Mm. You play it from, from one day to the next, even in a four-day tournament like a British Open, it did Absolutely, yeah. changes. Yeah, it, the way the routing of it is, you go kind of nine holes out, do a bit of a loop at the end, and then come back in. And uh, I've played that golf course every hole downwind and every hole into the wind. <laughs> so it's it's quite bizarre. And then other days you play every hole crosswind. So it's one of those golf courses which always throws up something new, and, and the history as well. I mean, when you turn the corner of, uh, I think it's the 17th, you've got to hit over the hotel. And you turn the corner, and then all of a sudden you see the 18th and the, you know, the little uh, Swilkham Bridge, I think it's called. And it's a, just one of the best, you know, atmospheres and arenas in in, in world golf. Now um, we spoke before about uh, about pros and, and teaching those coming through. I'm told you still get a lesson here yeah. when you, you pop down. Yeah, no, the Neil Simpson, the, the pro here at Mount Lolly, he's been my coach for about um, I'd probably say about 15 years now. No, yeah. I, uh, as I said before, I, I didn't come through the. The systems that the guys are coming through now, I, uh, I kind of sucked as an amateur. Um, two handicap was the lowest I got down to, and and after struggling as a as a club professional for a few years, I, I started to see Neil, and um, uh, just a light bulb went off in my head, and what he told me made sense, and uh, I just got better and better as we went along, and uh, yeah, to this day he's still still my coach. Um, I try to get him across to America two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. He's getting a little older, so it's hard to uh, entice him over, but he, he keeps coming, so it's nice. And uh, uh, him and my caddy have a bit of fun because my caddy's English and he's an old traditional Australian, so there's yeah. plenty of uh, plenty of banter going on there. So I just bring him over for the uh, for the competition between those two. So we, yeah. we we have a lot of fun. A good relationship, obviously, required between player and caddy. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, for a, for a golf pro, there's you know, once you're out on that golf course, it's just you and, and your caddy, basically. There's no one else to rely on. So if you're going through a downtime or, or you're not playing as well, it's nice to have someone there who can support you and maybe point out a thing or two that might be going wrong. And if you're playing well, you just want them to shut up and you just want to keep going. So uh, they have to pick their moments when to say things, when not to say things. And uh, they play a, a really, really big role in, uh, in a golf pro's life. Now, I read on your PGA profile that uh, tennis and baseball were other sports you participated in, and it says there that you, you had the choice almost between all three, uh, but you, you were correcting me a little bit before on that, that it might not have been quite that that, uh, that clear cut. Yeah, it's great with the press. You tell them anything and they run with it. So, um, no, I, you know, as a kid, like most Aussie kids, I, I played a lot of sports growing up. I loved my baseball, loved my tennis, loved my soccer. Um, I was pretty good at tennis and baseball, you know, I played at a state level in, in baseball and just didn't decide to go on with it because I used to get injured quite a lot. I was a catcher and uh, got hammered a bit behind the plate. Um, with tennis, you know, I, again, I played pretty well, beat some state players, but never never really went on with it. Golf sort of became more of my passion and uh, so, yeah, you get in the press rooms and, you know, they usually say, oh, do you like any other sports? And you tell them these stories and they say, oh, geez, you could have been a pro at anything, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm glad I chose golf, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Now, it's, um, obviously, you spend a fair bit of time in the States, um, and I'd say a little bit of time in Europe, uh, probably the British Open time, mm. that time of year and things. But always return to Perth at the end of the year, or, or what's the...? Yeah, it's good. Well, uh, you know, with a young family, um, we've got kids in school now, so that, that period over Christmas is normally when we used to come home for a couple of months. but. They're kind of in the middle of school there now, so uh, I come back for the Australian events, uh, like this year I'll be back. Excuse me for the um, uh, for the Australian Open, the PGA, and I have a, a pro am here that I run for with the Ronald McDonald House. Mm -hmm. So I'll be back for those, um, but then I'm straight back to the US again. So, yeah. but as I said earlier, I think uh, you know we'll be home for good sooner rather than later. I can't see myself uh, playing seniors to a golf over there at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously Perth's been going through a, a drastic change um, of itself in probably the last five to seven years. But what do you notice most changing in Perth when you get back? Oh, it's hard to get parking now with down my local cafe strip. I know that. Uh, now Mount Lawley is where I live, and it's uh, it's a great place, but it's getting busy. And uh, now it's I lived in Europe for probably five or six years, yeah. maybe longer actually. And um, we've been in the States for probably, I think the last four years. And we're travelling the world and seeing you know the different cities and places. You certainly appreciate how good we've got it here in Australia. And and for me, for Perth, I mean, it's my favourite city in the world. And the, obviously with the mining industry with the boom that's gone on there you can just notice how much busier and congested the city is getting but it's still a great place to live and I have my favourite spots and uh, yeah. 
and uh, it's a great lifestyle. You know, we, we take a lot of things for granted here, and um, when you see the other parts of the world and what other people go through, it's, it's a very special place. Excellent. Mm. Now, you mentioned favourite spots, so we'll go through the quintessential West Australian sure. quiz. Dockers or Eels? Uh, Dockers. Dockers, okay. Yeah, uh, I was number one ticket holder last year, so... Okay, yeah, no, fair enough then, we'll, no, we'll no, pay no. that. Uh, north of the river or south of the river? Uh, north. North? Always yeah. been, uh, Always been north, north Mount Lawley Wood? Uh, yeah, I went from Morley mm -hmm. to Naranda to Bedford to Mount Lawley, so, yeah, so I'm getting closer. We've about a 10k <laughs> radius from yeah. each other that you've always uh, always been there. Yeah. Ocean Beach Hotel or Cottesloe Beach Hotel? Uh, OBH, Ocean Beach. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Margaret River or Broome for the holiday? Margaret River. No, yeah. it's one of my favourite places in the world to go. Head south. Yeah. Yeah, we used to have a place in Dunsborough. Um, you know, sand, sun and wine. What more could you ask for? Yeah. And for local beach, Scarborough versus Trip? Uh, probably Scarborough. Yeah, they've, yeah. they've set up a great little amphitheatre down there now. It's yeah. a lot of fun for the kids. Yeah, we're actually we're using that one during the, um, during oh, okay. the event. Yeah, yeah, I saw the picture the, on the website there. Yeah. yeah, the surfing program will, uh, will go on down there and the beach volleyball program will uh, happen inside the amphitheatre. Oh, beautiful. Good. So it should be quite interesting. And mate, obviously you're a proud West Australian. Mm. Um, you say that's your, one of your favourite spots, if not favourite spot in the world. What do you think that the competitors from the games can look forward to in coming? Perth. Oh, great venues for one. Um, great weather, hopefully. I'm sure it'll be nice. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just a great lifestyle here. You know, have fantastic beaches, um, really good competition, and, and there's just so much to do here in Perth, and I think I'll have a blast. Excellent. Well, Nick, we thank you so much for your time. We thank you for your willingness to be involved with us. Uh, hopefully the, the recovery goes well with the, with the knees and you'll be back on top uh, sometime soon. See you hopefully when you come back down for the Australian season later mm. this year. Yeah, I look forward to uh, keeping an eye on the games on the internet from America and uh, and uh, hope everyone has a great time. Excellent. Thank you All very right. much. Cheers, mate. Thanks.